Seketa, Le Braco Sopotemo Sita, Jacobo Seketa, La Braco Seketemo Sopata, Jacobo Seketa, Yabatarava Sopota, Jacobo Seketa, Jeketemo Sopota, Jacotemo Sopetemo Sopata, La Posekemo Sopetemo Sopata, Jacobo Seketemo Sopata, Yabatarava Sopata, La Braco Seketemo Sopata, Jacotemo Sopata, Jeketemo Sokata, <laughs> Before you sit down, I just want to do a short prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, this very day that marks the year number eight of mysteries and revelations. You have ushered mysteries and revelations all the way. It was not about the revelator. It was about your ministration unto the seven churches. Through thick and thin, you have ushered me to lead your flock, to lead your shepherds, to lead the ministers the seven ministers that will minister unto the seven churches. Father, this very day, I'm asking once again that the seven angels that stand in the presence of the seven churches be in our midst throughout this gathering, which is not just a service. Father, I know that this day is not an ordinary service. It is a day that has been marked in the heavenly places. It is a day that resembles your seven spirits. And Father, because of this day, I want to stand in your presence once again. And thank you, Father, for giving me the grace to walk inside these eight years. It is not about the numbers. It is not about gatherings. It is about the agenda of soul winning. And Father, I pray on mysteries and revelations in year number eight. October eight. Year number eight. Mysteries and revelations turns eight. It was not by negotiation, it was by force. And Father, I'll continue not negotiating with any systems, for I am a man that is at war. I have not come to negotiate with the systems of Lucifer the devil. I am a man at war unto death. Father, before I am ushered into today's way, I ask again the seven signals of the seven spirits of revelation to come upon me before I deliver the weight that marks the ministry of fire. The ministry of fire, the ministry that is resembled by fire. And Father, once again, in your presence, I bow down, Father, to honor your name, to honor your presence. And Father, I honor also my mentor, resembled and symbolized by the eagle. But today, Father, we honor the minister of fire will resemble and signify the minister of fire in the name of Jesus. You can now take down, you can now take your seat. Welcome to week seven. The week seven in the ascension room. And this week seven. 
is not an ordinary day in the spirit. I know that the devil was trying very hard to make this day ordinary. But also I've learned all the way that there is nothing that can be achieved in mysteries and revelations without using force. You have to be radical. You have to be aggressive. If you are used to scriptures that allow you to quote words such as mercy, grace, calmness, softness, it does not exist in this ministry. What exists in this ministry is war all the way. For I have learned that the devil is at war against us. So we are going to match or overmatch his weapons. And it will be a weapon against a weapon. And uh, let me promise you one thing. We are moving forward and we are not moving backwards. Whoever falls, I'm not looking back this time. Until I, I, I raise the last seven. I'll repeat my words. Whoever falls, we are not looking back. If ever I, I appear as if I'm feeling sympathetic for you, it's because I know your words. It's a warning unto those that are not working for Christ. You have to prove yourself. Welcome to the Ministry of Fire. The episode three in the final presentation. Three characters were presented in part one. Who were namely Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I'm not going to be getting into those details to those that followed that presentation. That was the opener that marked the beginning of this series presentation. I talked about Shaksik Mishik and Abednego as the ministers of fire. And I gave you another character in episode two. And the character that you've given in episode two, it was another agent of fire who, who is none other than Elijah. Now, I now want to take you into the final presentation and I'm going to be meditating as I'll be teaching so that this presentation does not become long. Why? Because you have got other activities throughout this day and the other activities that we have throughout this day, this is not an ordinary gathering. So I'll make sure that at the end of the day, we are going to have moments where we are going to have refreshments because we are celebrating mysteries and revelations that is 10 to 8 and we are not only celebrating mysteries and revelations that is 10 to 8 if you are not celebrating i don't care i'm celebrating listen to me i've been ushered in this ministry in a dimension whereby i can celebrate on my own so you are the one that has joined mysteries and revelation celebration Mysteries and revelations can celebrate on its own. Even the rocks and trees can join me. I am a man that will not be stopped by men. I have refused that from the beginning. So I want to hear a shout. Shout! Ah, they don't want to shout. <laughs> Do you know why? Do you know why? It's because the demons inside the people, they are very angry. So what they did is exactly what I was expecting. If you think that I am falsely accusing people, you'll see. Because before celebrations, uh, uh, the Lord said to beat demons first before you celebrate. That is what I'm going to be doing. I want you to shout, Mysteries and Revelations 8. Mysteries and Revelations 8. Mysteries and Revelations 8. Mysteries and Revelations 8. Mysteries and Revelations the relaunch. Mysteries and revelations that we Revealing the deeper mysteries of God. Revealing the deeper mysteries of God. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. Whether it was done from the heart or not from the heart, I don't care. Now, we want to get into today's word. Which is now the third and the final segment of the Ministry of Fire. The Ministry of Fire is the 
mysteries and revelations that is symbolized by the logo. If your t-shirt that you are wearing today does not have a logo, ask someone to help you right now and you simply match out and you be given a t-shirt that has got a logo. Except for those that are new, you are spared. Except for those that are new, you, you will be given an opportunity to make your orders. Now, listen to me. This is year number eight. And this being year number eight, this is a year that is marking the mysteries and revelations beginning the beginning not only of mysteries and revelations but the relaunch mysteries and revelations was formed in 2015 but before 2015 there are many events that were highlighting the birth of mysteries and revelations and all those events that were highlighting the birth of mysteries and revelations, they were marked inside the eight years. There was a preparation inside the eight years of doing this relaunch. And there was another eight years before the launch of mysteries and revelations in 2015. At the age of 14, a voice called unto me. At the age of 14, a voice called me. In the way that the voice called me, Angel Gabriel descended in a trance, in a vision, and stepped his two on my chest. And he sent me with a message as he is sent with the messages. This is why this ministry will never be bankrupt when it comes to informative dimensions inside the word of God. Now, let us get into scriptures. The ministry of fire three, which marks the final presentation. Revelation chapter 11 verse 3. And I'll give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days. And I'll give power unto my two witnesses. There are two witnesses that are being explained in the book of Revelations. If you had not captured the scriptures in Revelations 11, and I'll give power unto two of my witnesses. And these two witnesses, there are two witnesses that have been assigned. And as they have been assigned, they have been assigned beforehand. And these two witnesses that have been assigned beforehand, they have been assigned from the beginning of time. These two witnesses, they are going to be made manifest in the last hour again. But these two witnesses, they are not just individuals, they represent a system. The first witness is Moses. Moses, who appeared before a burning bush. And when Moses appeared before a burning bush, he appeared and started conversing with the burning bush and inside the burning bush there was an angel of fire and angels are communicating all the time on behalf of god and this angel that was in the midst of fire was representing fire meaning that moses was conversing with an angel of fire he was conversing with fire Moses is not just called by a voice. He is called by fire. And he is assigned to go and deliver 
the nation of God that was under bondage, captivated by the nation of the devil himself. I'm not going to be taking you to, into details, but I'm just giving you a description or a fact file of these two witnesses. That's the second witness. There has been many disputes, many misunderstandings of who is really this second witness. Is it Elijah or Enoch? Enoch has already ascended beforehand. But when it comes to the witness of fire that I know it is Elijah, indeed Enoch is one of the greatest who ascended and never tasted death. But Elijah is taken by the horses and chariots of fire. But before Elijah is taken by the horses and chariots of fire, Elijah is able to demonstrate fire. And the fire that Elijah is able to demonstrate, it is the fire of a manifestation and a dimension that resembles miraculous activities of fire, like bringing fire from heaven. So, the two witnesses officially that are being mentioned by Revelations 11, it is Moses who represents the beginning and Elijah who represents the end. These two witnesses are the same two witnesses that appeared on the transfiguration. The two witnesses that appeared on the transfiguration, it was not, it was Moses and Elijah, it was not Moses and Enoch, it was not Elijah and Enoch, it was Moses and Elijah. You need to ask yourself, why did Elijah and Moses appear on the transfiguration? The answer is simple, those are the two witnesses that appeared on the transfiguration. They were there in the old times, the Old Testament. They transfigured on the, on the mount where the transfiguration of Jesus was marked by three individuals who were the most closest disciples of Jesus. Peter, James, and John followed Jesus and they witnessed them a transfiguration. And this transfiguration was not just a transfiguration. It was a transfiguration that was marked by visible manifestations of men that operate in different dimensions as angelic beings, as supernatural beings, as immortal beings. Elijah appears alongside Moses. But how is Elijah appearing alongside Moses? These two they represent the ministry of fire. I have already given you their description. And as they appear on the transfiguration, they appear flanking one that was in their midst, who is none other than the Messiah, who is Jesus Christ. And they are heard and they are seen confessing these three who represent the three day mystery where Jesus was going to ascend to the lower pit of hell, where Jesus was going to descend rather to the lower pit of hell and then ascend and ascend back to life. When he, he ascended back to life, he was yet to ascend back to his father. And that was where Mary Magdalene, the female disciple, appeared at the tomb and Jesus says, touch me not for I have not yet ascended to my father and your father and my God and your God. Moses and Elijah appear on the transfiguration and as Jesus is going down the mountain, John the Revelator is asking Jesus, what about the scriptures that tell us that Elijah must come first? This is John the Revelator wanting to seek an understanding. What about the scriptures that tell us that John, that Elijah is going to come first, and Jesus says, Elijah has already came, but and they did all sorts of things unto him. And he was referring to John the Baptist, who had already came in the spirit of Elijah. Now, I was just briefly giving you a 
generation so that you understand the description of these two men who represented the ultimate ministry of fire. In the book of Revelation, chapter 11, which we are currently reading, as I was giving you the narration, the two witnesses have been confirmed, is Moses and Elijah. And what is the mystery about these two witnesses? These two witnesses, one of them never tasted death. It is Elijah who was taken by the horses and chariots of fire. All that Elijah saw was fire. Chariots of fire, horses of fire. And Moses, the mystery behind the death of Moses remains untold. Why? Because his body was wrestled for by angel Michael and Lucifer the devil. Meaning that he appeared when the transfiguration gives us evidence that Moses never died also. Now, in the book of Revelation 11, which we are currently reading, these are the two witnesses, the two witnesses, without any witnesses. In 11 verse 4, Revelation 11 verse 4, these are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. Imagine two candlesticks being presented. You know that the seven churches are represented by seven candlesticks, and these that are going to be dispatched, representing part of the seven. They are just going to be two in the last hour. God is simply going to dispatch two of them, and these two, they are going to cause havoc here on earth. These two, they are going to be ministering destruction against the kingdom of darkness. These two are going to be ministering mayhem unto the heathens. These two are going to be ministering against the Sodom of this generation and the upcoming generation. Why? Because the servants that represent the ministry of fire are already here and you are looking at one of them. Whether you accept it or not. In Revelation chapter 11 verse 5, and if any man will hate them, fire proceeded out of their mouth. If any man tries to hate them, these two, who are going to descend back here on earth? If any man tries to be funny, if any, if any man tries to be critic, if you are one that is used to mocking men of God, if you are one that takes a man of God as your body, these ones, they will burn you. Why? Because they will not just be preaching. When they will be preaching, fire shall be proceeding out of their mouth. I'm talking about the two witnesses who represent the ministry of fire. As we are relaunching mysteries and revelations after eight years, as it was launched eight years ago, this is a relaunch. As you can see, I am adorned with the colors of mysteries and revelations, proudly adorned with the colors of mysteries and revelations, ready to move forward and never backwards. Mysteries and revelations representing the ministry of fire. Now, hear me. Two witnesses. Two witnesses representing the ministry of fire. And these two witnesses representing the ministry of fire, namely Elijah and Moses. Elijah and Moses, they are not written in Revelation 11. Why? Because they were kept as a mystery. So that he that understands it, the ministers of fire, he that understands the revelation that reveals the minister of fire should also understand the ministers, not just the ministry, but the ministers of fire. These two, fire shall proceed out of their mouth as they will be ministering. Fire shall proceed out of their mouth. We are not talking about those that use paraffinity to blow fire. That comes out of their mouth. No. This fire that will be coming out of the mouth of these two witnesses will be supernatural. And these two witnesses that represent the ministry of fire, according to Revelation 11, they will minister for specific number of days. This shall have power to shut heaven. We haven't even talked about the earth. 
This two shall have power to shut heaven. We haven't even talked about the earth. If they are going to shut heaven, you can imagine what they are going to do on the earth. Just two. That it rains not for days of their prophets, and they have power over waters to turn them to blood. Who wants to turn to water into blood? It was Moses. It was not Eno. Moses will be dead. That will be the return of Moses. Though he has power to turn water into blood, for what reason? Just to demonstrate their authority over the politicians. Just to demonstrate their, poli their, their authority over the world system. And they shall have dominion over this earth. They shall have authority. They shall have capacity. That has never been seen. I've already given you the description that is there. Everything in scriptures that these men will be ministering fire. And as they will be ministering fire, they will be dispatching fire that comes out of their mouth. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them. Meaning that they shall be given time to reign. And as they will be given time to reign, they will be given time to dominate this earth to shut down this earth, to send even plates, to kill the unbelievers who, who war against the believers. But there shall come a time when the beast shall be given power over them. And don't think that when that time shall come when the beast shall be given power over them. The beast is being glorified. It is only being allowed for a testimony. When they have finished their testimony, when they would have finished ministering, the beast that ascends out of the bottom pit shall make war against them and overcome them. The moment you read the part which says the beast shall overcome them, do not rejoice, do not mourn. Why? Because such men cannot be overcome. It continues and says, their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom. And Egypt, Sodom represented, representing the dimension and generation of sinners. And Egypt representing the land of captivity. And their two bodies will be lying in, the, in those two great cities. And the sinners, the empire, the kingdom of the devil shall celebrate. And this thing shall be allowed by God for a reason. I'm still reading. These two will be representing the ministration of fire. Now, and they of the people and kindreds and men of the towns and nations shall see their bodies three days and a half. Remember who was away for three days? It was Christ, the same that Moses and Elijah appeared with on the transfiguration. This three they continue up until the last hour. And as many nations of unbelievers, as many nations of sinners will be celebrating the downfall of these two, they shall dwell upon the earth, they shall rejoice over them and make men and send gifts to one another because these two prophets would have been tormented. After three days, after three days, these two shall ascend and they shall resurrect. These two, they shall come back to life. Why? Because you cannot kill Elijah. You cannot kill Moses. You can, yes, you can stop them breathing for a while, but even if you have stopped them breathing for, for a while in this dimension, they continue manifesting in another dimension. This is why even you hear demons mentioning John the Revelator even up until this hour. Why? Because John the Revelator represents the ministration of fire. And the ministry of fire, I'm going to be proving that in the scriptures. That is one thing that mysteries and revelations is putting, proving not just with the theories, 
proving, not just proving with scriptures. And we are different on that matter, we are different from many ministries, and I say it out of boldness, with courage, and all oh, yes, with the pride. Only area that I'm allowed to have pride is to tell you that this ministry is one of the ministries that doesn't just teach and then start sharing biscuits and seeds. It teaches and then starts demonstrating. Oh, yes, you hate this. I know you don't like this, but I say it because you don't like it. These two witnesses, they shall resurrect after three days. And when they resurrect after two days, and if they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a crowd, and their enemies beheld them. These are two witnesses that are already immortals. They shall come down here for an assignment. And after they finish their assignment, they shall ascend back where they belong. Why? Because they already transfigured on the transfiguration. These are immortals. Even when they come here, you, you will think the people of that generation, the sinners of that generation, the believers of that generation, the hypocrites of that generation will assume that these are ordinary people like us. These are two, two ordinary prophets like us. Just as you think that he is an ordinary person like you. Keep thinking in that limited revelation of yours. Let's go to the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 1. The day of the Pentecost. The day of the Pentecost. You don't need to be reminded what the day of the Pentecost is. Because you are wearing it. It was the day of fire. In Acts chapter 2 verse 1, and when the day of the Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord and in one place, and suddenly there was heard a sound like that of a mighty rushing wind. And that sound, that was like that of a mighty rushing wind. It was not an ordinary sound, but it was the sound of the Holy Spirit. Child of God, we are tired of people that say I have the Holy Spirit. After eating your baker, after eating your pizza and you go around saying, I, I have the Holy Spirit. Oh, yes, I feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. Why is it that it's only you who's feeling it? We are tired of people that say, I see this and I, and I saw that. Why is it that it is only you that is seeing it? Mysteries and revelations is refused. We believe that if the revelator is feeling the presence of the Holy Spirit, he must prove it to the church. We believe that if the revelator is seeing visions, he must prove it to the church. The church will also see visions. And when the church shall see visions, he shall know why it is seeing visions in the church and not at home. Did you not hear that? When the church shall see visions, he shall know why it saw visions in the presence and not at home. Did I, see, did I say you don't see visions at home? You see visions at home. But the dimensions of visions that you are going to be seeing today, the dimensions of visions that you are going to be seeing today, oh yes. Even your uncle, even your brother that you shared a blanket with, all you received was a manifestation of demonic possessions. How can you see such visions when you're sleeping with a, a wife that is cold in you the whole night? How can you have such visions when your husband is coming midnight to share a blanket with you, coming from, from a, his prostitute? You cannot see such visions. You have to be in the presence of a minister of fire for you to see the dimensions that you are going to be seeing today. And remember, and remember, I'm not flattering you. This ministry is not allowed to say things that it doesn't demonstrate. Oh, yes. And I say this out of pride. Oh, yes. Not hear me. I'm, I'm saying this out of time. Amen. Why? Because you, you impress them when they break, not about heavenly things. You impress them when they break about their cars that are out outside. You impress them when they build mansions. You 
you don't embrace the work of God. And when you have come in the presence of one like me that embraces the work of God and not material things, you start looking at me in an unusual way as if I'm saying things that don't exist. Now, and suddenly there was a sound that was heard, and 12 apostles that had been told to wait in the upper room. They were waiting in the upper room. The likes of John the Revelator was there. Simon Peter was there. James was there. Judas had already betrayed Jesus and already fallen. He was not part of the 12. Just like uh, some of you are not going to be part of the seven. Because your calling is that of being Judas. It's a calling. And I embrace it. Now, these men have been in the upper room for, for days. They are 12. And they are praying. And they are fasting. It doesn't matter that they walked with Jesus. It doesn't matter that they were with Jesus. They were sent to drive out demonic spirits. But what you are now waiting for, it needs you to wait. It needs you to be tested your patience. There are many things that happened for days in the upper room. They were praying, they were fasting. They were rolling on the floor, praying. And they encouraged each other. Jesus said, the Holy Spirit is going to come. Twelve of them that were selected, they remained intact. They never looked back. Remember, besides these twelve that are selected, I said Judas is already fallen. And amongst those seventy that Jesus used to send it really nearly, there are those that had already left the ministry, they had gone back to their world to take care of their physical useless professions of the earth that are temporal. The money lovers had already failed. If it was a designer, he had already gone. If it was a, 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 a nurse, he had already gone. If it was a teacher, he had already gone back to his profession. If it was a married man who worships his wife, he had already gone back to his wife. The 12 that are remaining, they, they are no nonsense individuals. These ones, they, they stand only for the weight of God. They stand only for the works of the Holy Spirit. And suddenly, the whole house where they were was filled by wind. There was a tense atmosphere. There was an environment and an atmosphere which I still feel like the scriptures did not give us the full information. There was an environment that was so tense, which I still feel like the scriptures did not give us the whole story. But this thing that happened upstairs, child of God, it was heard by even people that were downstairs. There were people that were downstairs. And they started asking each other, what is happening up there? There was intensity that filled in the upper room. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues. Cloven tongues like this. Like this. Some of you today are going to be seeing cloven tongues upon some of you. But these cloven tongues, they are going to be selecting, not sell out. That is not for me to do. That is for the one that is assigned me to choose. There are some of you you are going to see cloven tongues upon others. Some of you, you are going to see cloven tongues upon... I, I, I do know that demons can try to start lying. But you cannot lie to the revelator because when it is happening, I'm there. I'm not here. You think I'm here? How many times have I, do I have to prove to you that I'm not here? It is just the body that is here. I'm preaching from another level. This is part of the body that you enjoy watching, it is only temporarily standing here. For it is not the body that is at work, but the spirit. Love and tongues 
set upon each and every one of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with the other tongues, and the Spirit gave them utterance. After cloven tongues shaped in the symbol of fire, it was not a cat that was seen on their heads. It was not a giraffe. I said it was fire. It was not a beast. It was not anything that you wanted to hear. I said clothing. See, that is what it was seen. Meaning that it, as, as soon as it happened, all of them, they were pointing at each other, what is that on your head? And they were, they were overwhelmed by the spirit and they began to speak with the other tongues that they never started. These tongues that they were speaking, they were not only tongues from dimensions or tongues from the realms. They were tongues that were hit by unbelievers who were convinced that these people, they don't know our language. And they started hearing their languages. And those that were kind of, they began speaking nonsense. They said, this men are telling you. You always have people like that right now who are not part of this gathering. They are just hearing things from inside and they say these people are crazy. They are always there. The men, that were, the men and women that were outside the upper room, they are, they are there right now. You can be out of the upper room, but you are here. There are people that are outside this building right now. They represent the people that were outside the upper room. And they started assuming false things. They started assuming that these people are crazy. Others saying that these people don't have anything to do. They started saying many things. And amongst those things, they said these people are drunk. Different languages were hit. And Peter stood up amongst the twelve. Peter, Peter did not hide. Peter led by example. He did not hide. Peter, Peter moved in the spirit of expression. And he said, Men and women of the city, these men are not drunk of wine. But if they are drunk by the power of the Holy Spirit. And how does the Holy Spirit resemble itself? It does not resemble itself through water. No. Whatever you want the Holy Spirit to resemble itself through, if you don't mention fire, it is a bedtime story that you're telling us. You're telling us a folk tale. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Behold, at these that are speaking, not all Galileans. How come they are speaking in this language? When you receive the Holy Spirit today, you shall receive languages that you have never heard. I'm not saying things to flatter you. I'm saying things that are going to be happening in just a few minutes. When you receive the Holy Spirit today, some of you that are here, I promised you, I keep my weight. That is one good thing about the revelator. Some of you, just a few, I'm sending you outer space. You are going to go outer space and you are going to come with a report. I'm saying it before you go so that when you go, you don't come back and say, it is my gift. <laughs> there are people like that. You always have people like that. You borrow them something and they go around saying, it is mine. <laughs> yes, you are being borrowed for today because you haven't proven yourself. They are just borrowing you so that you know that it this, this is part of the package that you can have if you prove that you are loyal. Because you haven't proved that you are loyal. You are looking at me. Surprise, I said you haven't proved. Until you prove being denied by relatives, until you prove being denied by those that love you, then I'm not forcing you. You have to prove it by conviction of the Holy Spirit. Some of you are going to be taken out of space. Some of you, you are going to be taken into dimensions that show you the future of this ministry. Some of you are going to meet the revelator in the dimension of fire. Some of you are going to be taken into the past of this ministry, where you are going to see the beginning of the revelator and the genesis of the revelator. And there are different dimensions that are going to be happening in the midst of fire. Let's get up.
Lakota Karabase Ketemo Sokata. Shaproko Sokotemo Sokata. Shekote Kerebo Sokatemo Sokata. Yekote Kerebo Sokata. Somebody pray with me. Leke Tekerebo Sokata. Shako Tekerebo Soketa. Pray with me because. There is a sound of a mighty rushing wind that is coming on the end. It is coming. There is a sound of a mighty rushing wind. It is coming all the way. It is coming. It is coming. Let it never 